Hello, Father John Camus here at St. John Baptiste Church on 76th and Lexington. So today we're celebrating the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And we're going to be listening to Jesus speak words of consolation and encouragement to us. He tells us, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. So let's turn to the Lord as we begin to, with hearts open to his word. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, you are meek and humble of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your yoke is easy and your burden light. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, through the resurrection of your Son, death gives birth to new life, and the sufferings he endured restores hope to a fallen world. Make us one with you always, so that our joy may be holy and our love may give life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to read the Gospel reading today, and that's what we'll reflect on. So at that time, this is from the Gospel of Matthew, from that time Jesus said, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So this is certainly a well-known passage, especially that part, take my yoke, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, I'll give you rest. Right? We, all, we all know that by heart. So it's an important part of uh, Jesus' message. So just again, if we just put always, it's important to put the, the little passage into a context. It's not just coming out of the blue. So Jesus has just prepared his disciples in chapter 10. He's taught them, taught them, taught them, organized them, sent them out on mission. And now he's giving them a little bit more, uh, a little more insight perhaps uh, into what they're doing. And he's making a prayer to his father, right? He, he, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. So he starts off with a prayer. And he's looking at his disciples, and he calls them his little ones, right? that, that uh, God's will has been revealed to them in a simple way. Right? He, he wants them to be simple, to accept the simple message from God. When he concludes this little prayer, he adds to it, uh, and it's important again for us to hear this, that no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. So he's talking about the dynamic of the ministry. Jesus reveals Himself to the minister, to the disciples, to you and to me, and then uh, it's through that that revelation showing us who the Father is through him that we can also open that door for others that's the dynamic of our ministry is getting people to experience the Father in a deeper way then comes those words of comfort and consolation come to me he's inviting not only the disciples but all people come to me you who labor and are burdened and I will give you rest part of this is religious oppression uh, 
he was fighting very much against the misuse of the law, uh, the way it was being misused in his day, laying all these laws and regulations on people and forgetting the heart of it all. You know, that somehow if you followed all, every letter of the law to the, you know, the, to, to every jot and tittle, you know, then somehow that's going to make you a holy person. He's saying, no, it won't. It'll make you a disciplined person, uh, but it's not necessarily going to make you holy. The holiness comes from an understanding and a relationship with the Father. Right? The Father is the Holy One. Our relationship with Him opens the door of holiness to us. So that's what he's always moving toward, this experience of the heart. And it's so important for us to remember that. So this, come to me, uh, you know, I'll give you rest. He's saying, take off those, some of those religious burdens and come to me. Right? My message is simple. I'm revealing the Father to you. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a very important image, so let's think about it a little bit. So the yoke is that, uh, that, that uh, kind of parallel bar. It's a wooden, a wooden cross beam that's put on the ox. It's fastened to the ox across the front so the ox can pull a plow. And what's so important about the yoke is that it has to fit perfectly on that particular ox. Uh, it has to, otherwise it'll chafe, it'll get infected, uh, the animal will, you know, won't be able to do its work. So it's very important. And he, the way he puts it, my yoke is easy and my burden is like, right? my yoke, it fits perfectly. So the work that you do is not going to be difficult. Right? I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I'm, you know, my, it's, it's my, my yoke that I'm giving you. I'm carrying you. I'm, I'm energizing you to do the work of the ministry. Right? And that's the plowing of the field. So that image is so important for us to remember because we're being called, these last few weeks we're being called, preach the word. Right? You're not a priest, you're not a sister, you're not a brother, uh, but Jesus is overlooking that. He's, he's looking at you and he's saying, preach the word, open it up. Uh, let the Father be experienced through you. This is all that we've been called to. So today, I think as we listen to that in our own lives, that call uh, to minister, to carry the message of Jesus, I think we really have to very much uh, look at how he's teaming up with us, that image. I'll make that yoke for you and I'll put it on your shoulders. It'll fit perfectly and together we'll plow that field. Right? We'll, we'll get the harvest that's out there, bringing people into the experience of God's heart. So it's an important passage that we listen to today. And please take it very personally. It's meant for you. Let's gather our petitions now. So Jesus asked those who were burdened to come to him. And so we lift up our burdens to God, assured that we will find rest in the Lord. So we pray for our church May we offer Christ's healing forgiveness and peace of heart to all who are burdened. Let us pray to the Lord. And for our elected officials, may we commit ourselves to the work of peace and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. And for each of us, as we work in the vineyard of the Lord, may we always bring messages of hope and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for those suffering the effects of natural disasters such as storms and floods and extreme heat and drought. Let's hold them in our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. And pray, pray for all who are ill and for those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Let's pause for a moment, call to mind our personal intentions for today. Finally, I pray for all Christians, uh, every single one of us, uh, that we might be open to the call to bring the message of Christ to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. So Lord of mercy and loving compassion, you sent your son to bring peace and reconciliation to the world. May we carry his message 
and become instruments of his peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. And that blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And we pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the church. So Lord, through your sacraments, you give us the power of your grace. May this Eucharist help us to serve you faithfully. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. With love, we celebrate his death. With living faith, we proclaim his resurrection. And with unwavering hope, we await his return in glory. Now with the saints and all the angels, we praise you forever as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy, indeed the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And when supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. So in memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. And may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And we pray now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul will be healed. Let us pray. Lord, may the sacrifice and communion give us a share in your life and help us to love and to br help us to bring your love to the world. Grant this to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When the Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So I'll give you some information next week. Uh, as we gather to once again celebrate the Eucharist about the upcoming um, Novena to St. Anne. Uh, each day will be live streamed at noon. Uh, it may start a little earlier with the rosary, uh, but I'll give you that information next week if you want to follow us every day from July 17th through July 26th. So have a good week.